you should know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. Friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. From our war room here in San Antonio, today. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. honor the spirit of the Lord on this morning. It's so beautiful, just a beautiful day. We're going to get up to about 104 today. And so we just honor the spirit of the Lord in this place. The Holy Ghost is already here. And the Lord said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so we just honor the presence of the Lord in this place. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you all the honor and the glory on this morning, for there is none like you in all the heavens and in all the earth. If it were not for you, Father, everything that appears Everything that is seen was not made by that which does appear. And so, Father, we thank you on this morning for the, for your grace, for your mercy, for the privilege to be called your sons and your daughters, to be indwelt by your spirit. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. Let every heart and every mind that hears your word, Lord, be subject to your word. For you are sovereign, and you are the sovereign King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there is no one like you in all the heavens and in all the earth. Father, we honor you on this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Lord, anoint this to your servant now that I may speak your word with the boldness that you've granted unto me. Father, we thank you for the grace of life. We thank you for your mercy. We honor you. We love you. We extol you. We magnify you. Father, we'll be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise, and not to be stealers of it. In King Jesus' name we pray. Amen <clears throat> and amen. We just honor the Spirit of the Lord for being in this place on this morning. Again, I want to welcome everyone who is out here with us, everyone who is in the E-Church watching online, all of you that will be coming on, watching online. Again, we're in beautiful Holford Park here in North Garland, Texas. It is a beautiful day. Uh, the wind is going to work with us today. There's not much. There's a little going in the trees. But we just honor the presence of the Lord. I will begin on this premise. <clears throat> and of course, we're going to the Word as our custom is. So I hope you brought your Bibles. Those of you watching online certainly have yours. Hope you brought your notepads and your pens and brought everything that you need because we're going to move quickly in the Word this morning. And so we just honor the presence of the Lord. Psalms 119 is where we're going to begin. You don't have to necessarily turn there unless you want to. Psalms 119, 62 and 63 states, At midnight, <clears throat> and this is one of my favorite passages of scriptures, At midnight I will rise, Lord, to give me praise because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear the Lord and of them that 
keep thy precepts, and that is personal to me. I absolutely uh, discern and understand that way about all who are in the body of Christ. And so this is going to be critical thought for where we're going on this morning. That is our scripture, our worship scripture on this morning. And um, I want to put that in our mind because we are going to come back to Psalms 119 in the end of this message to hear what the Spirit of the Lord will continue to say to us. We are going to end in Psalms 119 this morning as we begin. We're going to take, I want to invite everybody to turn to the second chapter of Lamentations. Now, many of you don't study this book often, so it's going to be a great opportunity to actually take a look at this book. Many of us who are longtime veterans, we study this book <clears throat> and we've studied through it. It's not a long book, but we're going to go into the book of Lamentations this morning. The second chapter is going to be our subscribe scripture to hear what the Holy Ghost is going to say to us on this morning. And I'm going to tell you right now, don't preach apart from the Holy Ghost. So as I am speaking, don't pay attention to the bishop and the pastor. Pay attention to the Holy Ghost and what he's saying to us out here on this morning. And we bless the Lord for all who are out here. The pool is finally open here, and there are many out here. We don't put the camera on anybody because we don't want to make anybody nervous and think, but trust me when I tell you there are many people out here. And so the Lord has commanded us to come in this place. And I'm going to tell you, I would come out here and preach if there was just one soul. I've said it for the past 30 years that I've been preaching. I'll preach for one soul. And I'll preach to one soul like I'm preaching to 10,000. And I'll preach to 10,000 like I'm preaching to one soul. And so we're out here on this morning. Lamentations, Lamentations, the second chapter, we're going to read the third through the tenth verse is where we're going to concentrate our attention. I want us to hear carefully what the Holy Ghost is saying because I have had opportunity this past week as the Spirit of the Lord was dealing with me. And I want you to know I am not a sermonizer. I don't sermonize. I don't sit down to read to get a word from the Lord. I am an oracle of the Lord and a prophet of the Lord and a true of the Lord speaks to me. And if he doesn't speak to me, I wouldn't be standing up here preaching. And I'll tell you so much so that there are times, and I was sharing this with our first lady who we bless the Lord. She's here with us on this morning. Um, and we just love and honor her for all that she does for all of us. And I love and honor her personally as being... Um, my better half and I thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy upon her life and we love you baby um, and so I don't sermonize I'm not a sermonizer if the Lord doesn't speak I don't speak and so much so that there have been times where it has come right down to the wire this week being one where the Lord spoke to me on Wednesday and began to start the process with me but it did not complete until last night and so how many know you have to labor in the presence of the Lord? And this is not, the Lord says, come unto me all the labor, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But notice what he says, take upon me. He says, learn of me. And he says, and take my, he said, because my burden is easy and my yoke is light. But there is a burden, okay? There is a burden. You have to have a burden for the word of the Lord. You have to have a burden for your nation. If you're a prophet called to your nation or the nations of the world, which I am, you have to have a burden for the people of the Lord. You have to have a burden for those that are far from the Lord. The burden, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. But notice what the word says. There is one. And having said that, and so the Lord comes right down to the wire. We have to labor before the Lord to hear what is on our Father's heart. And so you, it takes patience to serve the Lord. It takes patience to serve people. It takes patience to hear what the Lord is saying because he is not going to pour out all the time. Sometimes he is going to withhold, not to be unjust or non-liberal, but he is going to withhold that happily we might seek after him. Because it's so easy when you're gifted and anointed of the Lord to begin to trust in your anointing and your gift rather than the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to go around that block again because I know somebody missed it. It is so easy when you're anointed and gifted of the Lord to begin to trust and operate out of your gift rather than the Spirit of the Lord. And that's why the Lord will withhold sometimes purposely to see if you're going to continue to seek him or are you going to go past him and just preach out of the vain imagination of your own heart. And uh, the Holy Ghost wanted somebody to know that on this morning. I'm sure it's you younger preachers, and I'm sure it's those of you uh, veteran preachers who have walked away from preaching by the Spirit of the Lord and are preaching out of the vain imagination of your own heart, whereby much of the church has become apostate. But there is a remnant, and the Lord says, according to the prophet Zechariah, two-thirds will be slain, and the other one-third I'm going to send through the fire. That one-third that's being sent through the fire, and that's going on right now, I might add, 
that one third will come out and as being tried in the fire, they will be the Lord's people. They will bear the markers of his word. They will be bearers of his word and bearers of his light. We preached on last week on King Jesus light of life, light of life doctrine and how the Pharisees and the scribes did not receive it. If you missed last week's message, go on YouTube. It's on there. Hit your subscribe button. Hit the notification so when the word comes up, you always be the first one to get it. All right? I don't care about the likes. If you want to comment, say anything, you can certainly. But what I care about is that you get the word of the Lord because it is certain in this season of life, we need the word of the Lord. Amen? And so we just honor the spirit of the Lord in this place. The Holy Ghost is going to speak to us this morning by a demonstration of his spirit and his power. See, what we need in this generation is we don't need just the word of the Lord because the kingdom is not just in word, but it is in a demonstration, the word says, of the Lord's power and of his spirit. We have to get that way down in our spirit because many of us are living apart from the spirit of the Lord, even though we say we have the Holy Ghost on us. I say it all the time. I've been saying it for 30 years. It's okay that you have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost should be present in you. But does the Holy Ghost have you? Is he master? Is he owner? Is he Lord? Can he tell us where to go, where not to go? Tell us what to say, what not to say. Are we trusting in him and leaning not to our own understanding, but trusting in him with all our heart? And the scripture says he shall direct our paths. Come on, when work with me this morning in the name of Jesus. And so, and so we have to, we have to make sure that the Holy Spirit has us, not just that we have the Holy Ghost. Uh, see, King David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is a, that translated there is the Lord is my personal possession. See, we have to understand that. It's one thing for you to have the Holy Ghost, but it's another thing for the Holy Ghost to have you. And that's what we have to concentrate on in our lives as believers is not so much that the Holy Ghost is present in us. He will do his work and he will do what he said he will do. But we have to make sure we do what we said we would do, which is yield and surrender at all times. Uh, if you're not saying amen, say ouch right there, but you need to be saying something. So we have to understand that the Holy Ghost needs to have our decision-making processes. He needs to have our hearts. He needs to have our hearts and our psychological states, our minds, our spirits, our animistic realm, which is the soul. We, he needs to have full reign in us so that he can, get, he can give us revelation. He can tell us what we need to be doing, where we need to be going. He's a part of all of our decision-making processes because if that is not the case, then it is certain we are not believers. We are doing what everyone else is doing. We have good religion, but we're not being led in a demonstration of the Lord's spirit and his power. And those that believe, according to Mark 16, we are led by his spirit and certainly we bear the markers of his power. Lamentations, the second chapter, <clears throat> and the third verse reads, he had cut off in his fierce anger, and I'm going to warn everybody to fasten your spiritual seatbelts on this morning, because this is nuclear, it's on a nuclear level, it's going to get hot and heavy out here, and certainly for those of you that are online. Again, want to welcome everybody online from around the country, and across the nation, and across the nations of the world. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. Let's listen forensically to what this passage of scripture is saying. For the word of the Lord here is nuclear. It is serious. This is a grave word that the Lord is releasing through the prophet Jeremiah to his name, his generation of Israelites. And this is the word that the Lord is leading and that the Lord is giving to the United States of America through this prophet in my generation. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. That means he has lifted his hand to protection off of Israel here, and he has lifted his hand to a degree off the United States of America. And that's why we're experiencing many things that we're experiencing. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire. This is not this is not a pillar of fire as Moses was led uh, as Moses led Israel through the Red Sea. This is a flaming fire according to the book of Hebrews that when it says our God is a consuming fire, this is a fire that consumes, which devoureth round about. There you go, it's right there in the text. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand 
as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion, which is Judah, he poured out his fury like fire. Please hear carefully what the Holy Ghost is saying to this nation. The Lord was as an enemy. It didn't say he was an enemy. It says he is as an enemy, which means he is responding to the nation of Israel in the prophet Jeremiah's generation and in the prophet Jeremiah's day as an enemy, as he is responding uh, to the United States of America. And this is where we need, see, we're talking about peace, peace, and the scripture says there is no peace. And we have to look at the blueprint and understand in our times, like the sons of Issachar in the days of King David, we have to understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying to our nation at any given time. And the way we're going to understand that is by those that he has anointed uh, by his spirit and by his power. The Lord was an enemy. You say, Bishop, why? I'm glad you asked because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But how shall they hear except a preacher be sent? And that's why I've been sent to Dallas, Texas from uh, Albany, New York, from the Capitol there after 23 years. The Lord has sent me to Dallas, Texas, because a lot of times and many times he will send his most anointed to the hottest spots on the battlefield. And I certify you here in Dallas, Texas, this is one of the hottest spots, if not the hottest spot in the nation and the nations of the world for demonic forces. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't believe it, get in your car, come down here, stay here a week or two and just drive around and pay attention. And I can direct you to many areas like Oakland and many other areas what's going on in the state of Texas and you're going to understand exactly why the Lord would send his most anointed to the state because he has to have somebody that's going to cry loud and spare not that's going to lift up their voice like a trumpet anybody know their word on this morning I'm telling you I feel like preaching and I'm not going to sit the preacher on the bench we have got to understand <clears throat> that the Lord is calling for his servants who are anointed to cry loud and spare not to lift up their voice like a trumpet and to show uh, that Jacob its sins and Israel, its transgressions. And that applies to America. That blueprint pride applies to every nation because every nation, the wicked shall be turned into hell, the scripture says. And every nation that forgets God. In America, we have forgotten God in many aspects. And we're going to take a look at that on this morning. And so he had sent his bow. It says he poured out his fury like fire, ending verse 4. Verse 5, the Lord was as an enemy. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed up all her palaces. Please listen to the language forensically and carefully here. He has destroyed his strongholds. See, he has, he ta he has taken away their protection. We're going to get deeper into that as we go further in this message. And hath increased in the daughter of Judah. Come on, mourning and lamentation. See, that's why it's called the book of Lamentations, because Jeremiah is not, it's not about the prophet Jeremiah being the weeping prophet. He is the weeping prophet because he is a symbol of what is happening in his nation. He's weeping because his people are weeping. Come on and get it in your spirits, elders. Come on and get it in your spirits, preachers from across the nation, uh, the United States of America. Come on. Why are we rejoicing? We're going to see this in the text when I read further. Why are we rejoicing in the house of the Lord and our nation is hurting? Our nation is crying. We're speaking peace, but we're hurting. Our nation is hurting. We're not sitting at the elders in this text that we're going to read in sackcloth and ashes, which is a symbol of repentance. But we are rejoicing in the house of the Lord. We are running around and prophets are prophesying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Why are we celebrating and our people in the United States of America are hurting? Right here in Dallas, Texas, we had a mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas. I want to know why we're shouting and jumping in the house of the Lord. But the scripture said, the scripture does say in Psalm 91, only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. But the scripture Scripture also says in another portion that if we rejoice when we see our enemies overtaken, the Lord will remove his judgment from our from his enemies, which are not mortal enemies, but the enemies of the cross. I want to know why we're rejoicing in the house of the Lord, and yet our people in this country are hurting. Come on and get it in your spirit and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to he that hath ears. Verse 6, and he hath violently taken away his tabernacle. I would underline that, and I would put a middle note on that. Put an asterisk, whatever you have to do, highlight it. But this is going to be critical. He had destroyed his places of the assembly. That's the congregation of the so-called righteous. The Lord hath caused the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion. You know, that's when people stop going to church. 
Now, say that's not true in the United States of America, and the polls that they have taken would prove you wrong, and have despised in the indignation of his anger the king, that's our president, and the priest. Come on and get it in your spirit. So those of you that are speaking out against the president of the United States and the vice president, those of you that won't like the current administration, well, you can thank the fact that we have moved away from the word of the Lord for who's in office, because when the hand of the Lord begins to remove off of a nation, it is going to affect all of those in the political realm and all of those in the so-called holy or religious realm. Come on and get it in your spirit. You better pay attention to what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us on this morning. When we as a nation begin to move away from the word of the Lord, it is going to affect a political office. It is going to affect the corporate office. It is going to affect the religious office. It is going to affect priest and prophet alike. And we are affected in this nation. You're going to see why I say that when we read further. Verse 7, the Lord hath cast off his altar. He hath aboard his sanctuary. That's why many of our churches in the United States of America are apostate right now because we have resisted the word of the Lord. We have rejected. We have rebelled against the word of the Lord as those that are leaders in his house. Many of us have turned to money and chasing covetousness, the scripture says, of which I've been preaching on much since we've been out here. If you missed all those messages, again, go on YouTube. They're out there right for you and you can catch yourself up to speed. Listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying carefully and have despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest were written twice. The Lord has off his altar. He has aboard his sanctuary. That's why much of the church in the United States of America and the world now is apostate. We have slipped back from the principles of the word of God and we have become apostate. That's what the word apostate means in its primary connotation to slide back from the principles and the discipline of the word of God. The old saints had it right. They called these individuals who were doing this backsliders. And we got backsliders from the front, from the pulpit now all the way to the back door. And this is why much of the church is apostate. This is why you can have churches that will set pride flags outside and even advertise calling evil good and good evil and you can come on in and everybody's accepted. It is true that everybody is accepted in the house of the Lord. That is true. They have that right. But you can't stay, but it is not true that you can come into the house of the Lord and stay in the sinful and abominable lifestyles and conditions that many people come into the house of the Lord with and call yourself sanctified and holy. That is not true. And that's what makes these churches apostate. Because your pastors and your shepherds of these houses, whose hearts are not at the Lord, are telling you you can live any old kind of way and we're going to sympathize. <clears throat> And we're going to surrender. And we saw this week Anita Wilson, the gospel singer. And I've been preaching against this, uh, th these gospel worship leaders for some time now as the Spirit of the Lord has directed me. Not just the preachers have stood up and said she supports the pride community and the gay community. When you get to that point, the Lord, according to Romans 1, has removed his hand off of you because you've been resistant for some time and you've been rebelling and now you have rejected the word of the Lord that he says that that lifestyle is an abomination as much as the thief as much as the murderer that we want to jump on because our prisons are full of them we want to jump on them and I'm a chaplain I preach to murderers I preach I'm talking about all over the country now get it in your spirit I'm not afraid I go into these places that most people would shirk at because the anointing of the Lord is truly in and upon me to be able to do so so you want to talk about all these folks that are in prison and all their crimes and what they've done but you know what there's a lot of spiritual sin that goes on that the courts don't that the courts don't see as sin and the courts don't prosecute but just because the courts of men don't prosecute you hear me carefully heathen unbeliever backslider and apostate just because our courts don't prosecute you doesn't mean that the courts of heaven won't come on and get it in your spirit and that's what we're reading here today is how the courts of heaven are prosecuting a nation for rejecting the word of the lord that is what we're that is what we're taking a look at i'm telling you fasten your spiritual seatbelt because we're going in deep this morning and i don't want you to be thrown for a loop he has given up into the hand of the enemies the walls of her palaces and how many knows walls is a symbol and we're going to get deeper into this walls are a symbol of the protection of a nation it is a symbol of the protection of a nation they have made a noise here's what i was um, uh, here's what i was alluding to earlier they have made a noise in the house of the lord as in the day of a solemn feast that noise is a noise of celebration and i'm going to ask us again uh church uh, uh so-called body of christ what what is, and it's not the body of christ doing this because we're here in the spirit of the lord it's this apostate church so i want to ask all of you apostate churches why are you celebrating in the house of the lord prophesying blessings in houses and cars when we have people whose children have been 
murder. We have we have all kind of problems. We have famine problems. We have drought problems across the country. We have problems with mothers getting baby formula for their children, fathers to, uh, getting gray hair before their time, worrying about how they're going to pay for the family. Why are we rejoicing and our people are hurting? Come on and get it in your spirit. That's because you're not hearing the spirit of the Lord. We got to get this way down in our spirit, apostate church, and you need to do it yesterday. Verse 8, the Lord hath purpose to destroy the wall. Uh oh The prophet is saying the Lord has made a determination. He has purpose by his will to destroy our protection. Mm -hmm. And all he has to do to do that is remove his hand off of a nation and we become open to our enemies. As we saw in Afghanistan, we become open to the things that can cause us pain and affliction and even bring us to the point of desolation. Come on and get it in your spirit. So the Lord had purpose to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out the line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, see, he's withdrawn his protection, but he has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. And see, that's hard for us to understand. It's a strange word. But when the Lord takes his hand off of the nation and when he allows destruction to begin, he is not doing that to why certainly the hell is enlarging herself to receive the wicked. But we have to balance this with the fact that the Lord is doing this to bring many who will hear who wouldn't previously be willing to hear unto redemption. So anytime the Lord allows destruction, he is removing those that are utterly wicked that will not hear him whatsoever and will make never make a decision for him so that the rest who will make a decision for him can have a clear uh, a clear view and a clear path to hear the message of the Lord Jesus Christ that they might be saved and filled with his precious spirit. And those of you that are out here so if you don't know the Lord Jesus shed his blood that has to be accepted in your spirit and then you have to ask the lord for the gift of the holy ghost if you will repent according to acts 2 and 38 you will receive the gift of the holy ghost you will speak in other tongues i don't know why many of you preachers are saying oh you don't need to speak in tongues to be a believer i'm going to tell you this why is it that we're always looking for everything the bare minimum that we can do to be considered sanctified holy and saved instead of wanting all the gifts of the holy ghost and speaking in tongues is a gift uh, from the Lord, everything, every good and perfect gift, the scripture says, come down from the Father of lights, comes down from above, from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness and shadow of turning. See, we have variableness and shadow of turning amongst the preachers because you don't have accurate revelation in the Holy Ghost. Many of you don't even have the Holy Ghost. So you're preaching out of the vain imagination of your heart. You don't even hear and you don't even understand what the Holy Ghost is saying. And that's why we have so many churches in this country right now. Because we don't want unity. What we want is people to unify with our mess. We don't want to have unity in the spirit. And so this is why we're teaching all kinds of seducing demons. We're teaching by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils of which the Apostle Paul's revelation in the Holy Ghost says that in the last days this would be so. And we're there right now. Her gates, verse 9, are sunken. Let me finish verse 8. Hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore he hath made the rampart and the wall to lament. Mm -hmm. They languish together. And that has happened in the United States of America right now. There's a lot of weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth because we've had three plagues come on this land between January 1st and March 31st of every year. We got seven more years to go. Bishop Senegal down there in Houston, Texas, was prophesying last night. We got seven more years. That prophecy is accurate with what the Lord has given me and many other prophets. And so, and I don't personally know Bishop Senegal. And so the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to him. He doesn't know me. And so the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And I actually gave this prophetic word before uh, two years ago before he gave, uh, actually close to three, before he gave it on last night. And so it's a reiteration. The Lord is keeping us on the prophetic timeline as believers through his prophets who he's revealing his secrets to so that we can understand body of Christ and we can keep ourselves with our oil in our lamps. Anybody know Matthew 25 on this morning? Listen to verse 9. His Her gates are sunken into the ground. And the gates are a representation. It's a symbol of the representation of a nation. It also slightly is for 
protection, but it's more so for representation. In other words, the symbols that you see on the gates and the gates of America are the, twin, are the trade towers, which by the way, were brought to the ground. Pay attention carefully and hear what the Holy Ghost is trying to say to us and show us on this morning. The gates, uh, the gates of America, the wall of America is our military force and our defenses, but the gates of America are the twin towers of New York City because they represent what we're saying to the world that the nation is about. And it is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel who sent Jesus Christ as it should be when the nation began. There were no twin towers. Come on and get it down in your spirit and hear what the Holy Ghost is saying on this morning, even if you're choking on it. And so we built these twin towers because what the twin towers are a representation of, and the Lord used the same enemy that he used on Israel. He used the Assyrians, and those that attack the World Trade Center are descendants of the Assyrians, by the way, if you know your theology and the scripture, they were the first terrorists. They are the fathers of all terrorists, the Assyrians are. And those are the ones that attacked our gate, the same ones that attacked the gate here as it relates to Israel. Come on and get it in your spirit. The word of the Lord is perfect. And it does not miss. And all of you that are trying to find a way around it, you cannot. Because the Lord said, I change not my power sovereign. And every spirit in heaven and earth is subject to the King of kings and Lord of lords. And so our gates are New York City. And the gates uh, uh, in particular, the, uh, the symbols on the gates are the trade towers. So you know what that tells us? That the symbol, when we go inside the gates, what we're going to find. See, when you go into Israel, what you were supposed to find was holiness unto the Lord. What you were supposed to find is the, the nation walking in righteousness. What you were supposed to find, because what was the symbol on the gate? The Son of David. What was the symbol on the gate? The house of the Lord. What was the symbol on the gate? That they had the oracles of the Lord. But when the prophet Ezekiel, when the prophet Isaiah, when the prophet Jeremiah, and when the prophet Daniel, and even up to Jesus' day with the prophet John the Baptist, when you walked inside of those gates, you found everything but the oracles. You found and you found an altered version of the oracles. The oracles, hear me carefully, all of you apostate preachers. You found doctrines of seducing spirits and demons inside the gates. You better get it down in your spirit and you better do it yesterday. You didn't find the true oracles of the Lord. You found an altered word, which Paul's apostle Paul to say, if any man preach another gospel than the one we preach, the one I'm preaching right right now, let him be anathema, that is cursed, anathema maranatha, the great, uh, powerful, grave anathema of the apostle Paul, cursed to the Lord comes, is what it means in the Greek, and then the apostle John said, if you take from the words of this book, your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life, if you add to the words of this book, then the plagues of this book will be added unto you, you know, like COVID-19, we've had three plagues come on this land, and we got seven more coming, each will trigger the prophecy specific, we do not prophesy vague or in the dark, the prophecy is specific. You mark it January 1st to March 31st. The fourth plague is coming of 2023. March, uh, January 1st to March 31st, we have the COVID-19 plague set in. And then January 1st to March 31st, matter of fact, January 6th to be specific, they, they raided the capital of which that's still clinging to us. The plague is still clinging to us. I prophesied the past several years since I've been in Dallas, Texas, that it will cling to us according to Deuteronomy 28. And February 23rd, Russia invades Ukraine, and that is still clinging to us, and it is going to until 2030, could be much as 2035, if this nation refuses to repent. But I am certain that we are going to repent. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Governor, I believe his name is Mark Robinson at Bishop Wooden's Church, uh, Upper Room uh, Church of God in Christ out there, and I believe it's in South Carolina. I believe South Carolina, don't quote me on that, South Carolina, it's one of the Carolinas, we have South Carolina. Bishop Wooten, uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson is standing up talking about the state of uh, transgenderism and how the church has rejected it. And this is what we're going to have to have is the priest, is the prophet, and the, our political leaders, the political realm, and the and the, the political realm, and I prophesied this before many times, the political realm and the corporate realm are going to have to become subject to the prophetic realm if our nation is going to do a one and come in to the auspicious favor of the Lord. If we're going to return, if we're going to have revival, then all of these powers are going to have to become subject to the prophetic powers. Now, those of you that are saying, I need to go into office and you're preaching that, it is foolishness, it is error, it is not of the spirit of the Lord. What the Lord wants the body of Christ to do is display his manifold wisdom before all of these offices, before, because we are bearers of the word of the Lord. I posted on yesterday, and you can go on the Facebook ministry page and my personal page on Facebook, and you will see that I posted a America, you, you fight for the right to bear arms, but you do not fight for the right to bear 
but you will not fight for the right to bear the word of the Lord. And it is sickening and is what is causing our nation to be sick and unhealthy and bear the markers of the Lord's judgment. The Lord's judgment. Because that's what we're looking at here in these in, in verse uh, 3 through 10 in Lamentations 2. We're looking at a, a blueprint of a nation that's bearing the markers of the Lord's judgment. And so this is where we are. And we are such a nation as Israel was in the prophet Jeremiah's day. Verse 9. He hath destroyed and broken her bars, her king and her prince are among the Gentiles the law is no more now watch this carefully her prophets also find no vision from the Lord then I want to know if the prophets become apostate and they can't find vision from the Lord and judgment begins at the house of the Lord first in order to restore vision and you know there are times in Israel's uh, history where there was no open vision the prophet Eli in the prophet Samuel's day was one of them where the vision of the Lord was scarce there was no word from the Lord in their day the prophet Amos said a day was coming in his time that it wouldn't be a famine of food and water, but it'd be a famine of hearing the true word of the Lord. And we are, America, we are experiencing that right now. But the Lord is bringing prophets off the backside of the desert. I've been around preaching for 30 years. Many of you don't know me, and many do know me across the country and around the world. But when you know me, you know me as preaching the true gospel. You know me as giving, thus saith the Lord, because he will reveal to you the thoughts and intents of your heart. But most importantly, you will know me because your life will be transformed either by excess acceptation in salvation or by destruction, desolation, and judgment and your rejection of the word that I preach. But there is no in-between because the Lord has given me extreme ministry as he gave to the prophet Jeremiah and the prophet Elisha. Come on and get it in your spirit and we need to do it yesterday. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. Lamentations, the second chapter, ninth verse for those of you that are just joining or will be joining. Uh, those of you that are online, share, 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 please share because this nation needs to hear this word. Word. Your family members need to hear this word. Your co-workers need to hear this word. Now, all you need is a mustard seed of faith, a little bit of boldness to share that word. Hit that share button. All of you that are watching with me online, share, 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 because people need to hear this word. I don't care if they're saved or unsaved. Everyone needs to hear this word of the Lord. Listen to me carefully. Verse 12, the elders of the daughter of Zion, I alluded to this earlier, sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. This is a symbol and an image of of elders who are repenting for where their nation is before the Lord. They have girded themselves with sackcloth, another image of, of, of repentance. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. I want to know why our women are talking about this, this, that, and money, and this, and, 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 and I'm fabulous, and I'm all of this stuff. Let me explain something to you. Why are our women not weeping? When we have mothers in this nation weeping over their children, why are the sisters and the mothers of the house of the Lord not in prayer and fasting and in repentance for this nation as the prophet Daniel was? Come on and get it in your spirit. And the Lord says the prophet Daniel sends an, sends an angel to tell him, you are a man greatly beloved in heaven. Many of you cannot say that, and many of you, angels have not come to you to tell you that. So I want to know if this prophet is repenting for the sins of his nation. He is weeping. This prophet here. The prophet Jeremiah is weeping. Why are we rejoicing in the church talking about houses, cars, and land? I'll tell you why. Because we don't have prophets in these apostate churches. We have soothsayers. Come on and get it in your spirit last night. Many of you who don't know Prophet Dyshawn Gordon and Prophetess Michelle Gordon, you type in On Fire for Christ Ministries Incorporated. You go in there. They have a teaching. Come on and get it in your spirit. They have a teaching on this very thing. You go in there and you look at their teaching on the spirit of Python because that is going on in the United States of America right now. You get online and you get that teaching and you get yourself up to par because many that is what's going on in our house There's a stranglehold that has caused the church to be apostate because we're not our preachers aren't preaching the true word of the Lord in these apostate churches What they are preaching is an altered version and it is causing our nation to bear the markers This is why the Lord said my judgment is going to begin in my house first and he says if the right, he says, listen, the time has come, the Apostle Peter, uh, uh, First Peter, uh, the fourth chapter, <laughs> that the judgment is going to begin in the house of the Lord. And if it begin first in us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous will scarcely be corrected and rebuked, it says say, but it means corrected and rebuked unto walking in correct alignment with your salvation. If we will scarcely do this apostate church, what shall be the end? It says, where shall the, uh, the sinner and the ungodly appear? See, church, the Lord will put a forcible measure upon us in order to either wipe us out if 
we are absolutely reprobate or give us a chance for redemption if we're not in order to save those that he has placed us here to save. And many of you are playing church rather than being the church. And the Lord has made a determination to absolutely correct this by putting us all in fire. I want to know what's going to happen when your prophets are telling you prophesying peace in houses, land, and cars, but many in your households are dying. Come on, I said it. I know it's super highly and egregiously inflammatory, and I'm going to say it anyway because we need it, and we need it yesterday. Many of them are telling you they are prophesying lies to you out of the seat of their own heart because they want you to support their church and build up their church. But see, ministries like ours, that people won't support because we're not to the church. But I'm going to tell you right now, listen to me, this ministry and this word is going to go forward. And I'm telling you right now, and I'm not concerned about anybody giving or things like that. Give if you want to. We bless the Lord for you and he will bless you. But let me tell you right now, this word is marching forward whether you do or you don't. Come on and get it in your spirit. Because I'm not sitting here trying to build mega churches and build all of this stuff and people are going to hell. I don't want 40,000 people in my sanctuary that are on their way to hell. I'd rather have four disciples that are sure that oils are in their lamp. Oil is in their lamp and they're on their way to see the king. Come on and get it in your spirit. And also, they can see the king here and now. Because if you can't see the king here and now and you don't have the anointing and the Holy Ghost here and now, when you die, you're going into the lake of fire. It's too late then. You have to be in the kingdom here and you have to be in the kingdom now come on and get it in your spirit and hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to us so here we have lamentations and we're going to go through this methodically and carefully as the spirit of the lord speaks to us i hope you got your bibles ready because you know i'm a word man we're going to burn up the pages of the bible this morning bishop this is too long and this mm -hmm. and i bet that's what you're going to think when you get in hell too it's too long except it lasts forever and your smoke the smoke of your torment will rise up and you can't get out of it bishop i can't believe you preaching about hell i preach about hell because christ preached about hell and christ is in me right now preaching you still in this generation about hell as he preached through the apostles in the first generation to their nation about hell so come on and get it in your spirit uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords preaches hell. I don't know what you preachers are talking about and where you got your gospel from, but it's not the one that's in this Bible. You have altered it because the Lord preached more about hell than he did about heaven. Come on and get it in your spirit. And you say that's fear mongering. You're preaching fear and all of these things. Let me explain something. You can call it what you want, but you're going to end up there if you don't hear what this six foot two high yellow prophet in the power of the Holy Ghost is saying to you on this morning. Come on and get it in your spirit. So this is a blueprint that we're looking at of a nation that bears the markers of the Lord's judgment. And that's what we, we need to pay attention to this text this morning. I'm telling you, there should be a whole lot of underlining, highlighting, marking notes in your margin. Don't be afraid. Don't desecrate the Bible. But but you can use it. You can treat it like a textbook because it is. And it is for light. And it is for the light of life and godliness and holiness. It's for everything that believer that the believer needs to walk in his or her salvation. Come on and get it in your spirit on this morning. I want you to look right at, I want you to notice verse 6 and 7 with me. Okay. And the Lord, the Lord is speaking about his house here. He's talking about his house. He's not talking about your house or my house. He's not talking about the White House. He's not talking about the King's house or the Queen's house uh, like Buckingham House. He's not not talking about anybody's house he's talking about his house here and his house is a symbol for where his word should be the lord jesus turned the tables of the money changers over and he said this house is a house of prayer should be called the house of prayer he's reiterating the messianic song but you have made it a den of these we need to pay attention here because many of the houses of worship of the united states of america and here in dallas texas and here in the dallas fort worth area we got nine churches on every corner i thought detroit had a ton of churches and now i'm wondering if dallas has more in Detroit. And I'm telling you right now, Dallas Fort Worth, I should say, has more than Detroit because Detroit had four on every corner. It seems like there's nine on every corner here. But the problem is many of them are apostate. In other words, if you were to go in there, you will hear the word. If you were to go in there, you will hear an altered form of gospel. You would hear the word. You would see worship. You would have all these things, but your life wouldn't be transformed. Why is that? Because although we have many churches, the Holy Ghost is not dwelling in, in hardly any of them. Come on and get it down in your spirit. And that's why you can walk in out of the club on Friday night, walk in Sunday morning, and you will have the same spirit that when you walk out of that church on Sunday, you won't be no fur further convicted of your sin. You won't be any further convicted of what you're supposed to be doing the Lord. You won't be any more saved. You won't be any more transformed because these churches are dead because the spirit of the Lord is not in these churches. Come on and get it down in your spirit. Of the you, I know many of you don't like this on this morning, but you need to hear this because this is a bomb in Gilead. This is a healing word. This 
is a word that will heal you if you have ears to not just hear but understand. If you have eyes that not just see but perceive, you are going to receive deliverance from the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of His Holy Ghost on this morning. You can be saved right where you are in that e-church. Those of you out here that are listening to me, you can be saved right now. You don't have to wait to the conclusion of this message. You can call on the Lord Jesus right now and He will answer you in your spirit. You say, Bishop, how will I know when He comes? You don't have to ask that question. But when the Lord makes an entrance into your spirit, He makes a grand one and you won't have any need that anybody tell you He's in your heart. When He came into your heart 30 years ago, baby, I didn't need anybody to tell me He was there because my life was transformed. All of the desires and wicked habits I had, vice I had, they just dropped out of my spirit. 30 years ago was the last time I entered a club. Come on and get it down in your spirit. And those of you that say, I'm not saying that we're perfect, but I'm saying we can live holy and we can live righteous and we can live in the mature perfection of the Lord because the Lord has called the body of Christ to the full stature and measure of who he is. And so we can live holy, we can live saved in the midst of a perverse and a crooked generation. I'm preaching right now and I hope you hear the Holy Ghost is touching somebody else beside me. I'm not going to ask if I have a witness because I want more than a witness. I want the Holy Ghost to touch you deep down in your spirit and transform your life. Come on and get it down in your spirit and you need to do it with all gravity and you need to do it quickly because time is running short. Preachers, we got to work while it is day for the Lord. For our master said the night is coming when no man can work. Come on and get it in your spirit. So in verse 6 and 7, what we have is the house of the Lord and, 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 and the house of the Lord in this particular passage is a symbol to point us to what's in the house and what should be in the house is the unadulterated, non-watered non-filtered down word of the Lord but that is not in most of our churches that's what we have to be on every corner especially here where we are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area come on and get it down in your spirit go with me to Jeremiah the 7th chapter see the word of the Lord is supposed to be in his house and what happens is when it's not we begin to bear the markers of his judgment in this nation and the primary one and the first one that we will notice is that his hand of protection will begin to lift off the nation not all at once it is a process Israel was not destroyed all at once. Israel was destroyed in phases. And then finally there, they would be captured at times. They would be brought under subjection to the Philistines and this nation and that nation and to the Chaldeans and so on and so forth as the Old Testament, if you understand your Old Testament theology, records. But it would happen in phases. And then finally the Lord begins to have the major prophets prophesy, I'm getting ready to scatter you to the four winds of the earth. First he sent them into Babylon by the prophet Jeremiah's prophetic word. But then by the time they get to the prophet Daniel and they come on through to the minor prophets, the Lord starts prophesying, I'm going to scatter you to the four winds of the earth and your nation will exist no more. And it did not exist for over 2,000 years until uh, May of 1948. Get it down in your spirit because you can sit here and argue with the word of the Lord all you want. But his word shall come to pass. It's not a if, it's not a might, it's not a coulda, woulda, and a shoulda. It will and it shall come to pass. We have forsaken the word of the Lord in this nation. As a nation, we have forsaken the word of the Lord as individual communities. We have forsaken, I'm not talking about all, but the majority of this nation and our spiritual tapestry, when we have rejected the word of the Lord, we have forsaken it. We have put it far away from us. We don't even pick it up unless we're going to Easter Sunday service like the Lord is a genie in a bottle, like we're tipping him like he's some type of waitress waiting on us, like he's some type of waiter waiting our tables. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give him a tip. You can't come to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, with that kind of apathetic and lethargic spirit and disrespectful spirit, because the Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews, and I believe he wrote it, for my theologians, I know you're going to test that, I believe he wrote it, he says that our God is a consuming fire, and let me tell you something, the only thing the Lord has to do, all he has to do to consume a people, to consume a nation, to consume a community, to consume an individual life, is simply to take his hand off of you and you will be in grave trouble as we see in this text here go with me we're going to spend all of our entire time in the book of jeremiah today so you can call this kind of an expose in the book of jeremiah because all the answers we're seeking and what the holy ghost wants us to know we can find in the book of jeremiah and we will end up in psalms 119 so keep your place in psalms 119 because the holy ghost wants us to get there so we can see the scripture of hope that we have how are we going to correct everything that he's going to say to us we're going to find the answer in Psalms 119. Back up to Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is the prophet that also has recorded by his scribes the book of Lamentations. Let's go to Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. So we all, we, all you got to do is have the book of Jeremiah open. We're not going anywhere else today. Everything we need to see that the Holy Ghost wants to talk about with us is in the book of Jeremiah. 
So he has made it easy for us this morning. Come on and get it in your spirit, okay? And you say, Bishop, you know, you are a hard preacher. I am because Satan is on his J-O-B. Demons don't need to sleep while all of us are sleeping. They say, Bishop, I can't believe I call you at 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning and you are actually up. I'm up because Satan is up. Come on and get it in your spirit. That's why I read. That's why I quoted to us earlier. I didn't actually read it. I, mem I have it memorized in my spirit. That at midnight, notice the hour of worship. At midnight, I will rise to give you praise, Lord, because of your righteous judgment. What does that mean? Because of your word. Because it's your word that leads me. It's your word that is lamp and a light unto my feet. That unlike Jeremiah, uh, 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 the ninth cha the 23rd chapter, right around the 12th verse, I won't be walking in slippery places of darkness whereby I might fall. Come on and get it in your spirit. You need to really understand that. I, at midnight, I'm rising to give him praise because of his righteous judgment. Another passage of scripture says, seek him early while he may be found. So while the devil is not sleeping and you all are sleeping, that's why our churches are becoming apostate and our nation is now bearing the markers of judgment. And this is not going away because the Lord made a determination in 2020 that we're going to endure 10 years of these markers and they are the fourth one is coming i certify you if i be a prophet and serving the lord and i know that i am with 30 years of experience and open air revival and preaching inside the temple outside the temple house churches in the temple i mean in the house of the lord uh the official house of the lord, outside in an open air revival i'm telling you right now you need to get it in your spirit we're going to bear seven more markers of these judgments so if you think it's tight now you wait, baby, because it's going to get a whole lot tighter, and your faith is going to be tested. All of you that say you believe in Christ, well, your faith is going to be tested right down to its last fiber of your being, and many of you are not going to make it. I can prophesy to you right now, you're not going to make it, because you're still hooked into your God of money, rather than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, who, whose son is Jesus Christ. Many of you don't even know that according to the Hebrew calendar and according to the revelation of the Lord through our our Jewish brothers and sisters that we're in a show meeting here tonight and get it in your spirit. If you don't know what you need to do some research and whenever we have a show meeting here our economics are going to be in trouble and that's why they're in trouble this year. See many of you don't have the revelation of the you don't know why you're struggling in your bills and struggling in your money with your money and struggling on the stock market and the market won't stay stable and all this that's because you don't bear the word of the Lord you don't bear the revelation you're listening to all the secular heads and all the false prophets and all the secular prophets and think they know what the market's going to do think they know what the direction the nation is headed in but I certify you they don't know anything and that's why you got to subject yourself to the prophetic the true prophetic network of the Lord that's preaching the unadulterated word that's not going to tell you what you want to hear but it's going to tell you what you need to hear so your heart and your spirit and your family and this nation can begin to heal. We don't need to listen to the President of the United States for our primary council. You know who our primary council needs to come from? And the body of Christ knows this and why we're telling all you apostates and heathens and unbeliever, your council needs to come from the Lord. I'm going to show you why and I hope that I hope you can hear and see even if it's an inkling in the word of the Lord on this morning as the Holy Ghost gives it to us. Jeremiah the 7th chapter look right at the 25th verse. Jeremiah the 7th chapter look right at the 25th verse, Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. And I want you to look right at the 25th verse, Jeremiah 7 and 25. I'm just giving time for everyone to get there. Jeremiah 7 and 25, and we're going to read a ways. I'm telling you right now, we got some long passages to read, so don't let it throw you. Jeremiah 25. Through 34. It says, Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, please listen forensically unto this day. I have even set unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. That could be said of the United States of America since the American Revolutionary War. We are a nation that comes out of another nation. Come on and get it in your spirit. As Israel came out of Egypt, so America came out of Britain. You better get it down in your spirit and you better do it yesterday. And since the time of our nation, the Lord has sent great prophets to prophesy to this nation both of blessing and of cursing if we would accept or reject his word, depending on which one we have done. And at this point, our generation, our nation, for a long time, you can mark the last 
last 40 years. Matter of fact, before that, 1970, you can mark the year is when our nation began to do an about face in our law. See, the repentance for a nation is different for that of an individual. When the nation repent, it repents, it has to change its laws. Come on and get it in your spirit. Marriage is still one man and one woman. I don't care what you say. That's what the Lord has made it, and that's what's going to stand. And I don't care how much you fight against it and what communities you build to fight against it. Your community is not going to fight against the word of the Lord and stand doing it. You are going to fall, and that is certain. He's going to bring you from your high places all the way down. Many of you in this gay community are sitting in high places right now, but you're coming down. You better get it in your spirit, and you better you do it yesterday because this prophet is prophesying to you. Many in this corporate world who are shucking and jiving and doing all this weird stuff to get money, and and God, and, and your, your God is money. All of your direct counsel and your false worship comes about getting money. You're coming from your high places. All of you that have been touched by that same covetous spirit in the political realm, you're coming down too, and that's why our economics are being so drastically affected, and if you think they're affected now, fasten your seatbelt. It's going to get a whole lot worse. Matter of fact, I can prophesy to you, and I have this prophecy on TikTok, TikTok concerning uh, Governor Abbott. It's going to get so bad, we're going to need a leader to come forth and bring a type of new deal in order to pull our country out of the judgment of the Lord. That's how bad it's going to get in this country. You better come on and get it in your spirit. And I prophesied, you go on YouTube, how bad it's going to get. I was vivid, I was detailed, and we are not playing around. You don't have to guess, and you don't have to figure. This is going to get a whole lot worse. You better get it down in your spirit. Come on. This is not a game. Yet they hearken not unto me. Listen to what the Lord is saying to the prophet Jeremiah. Yet they hearken not unto me. Mm -hmm. That could be said of the United States of America. That's why we're bearing the markers of his judgment. Nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. That could be said of our country as well. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm doing out here this morning, thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Mm -hmm. Like you're not answering me on this morning. I began to preach and it cleared this place out. With the, with, I mean, there's so many people out here, but this immediate area, they cleared them out. They didn't want to hear the word of the Lord. They start running. See, that's what happens when you shut your ears to the word of the Lord. But all of these ones that ran and got up out of here, wait, wait, wait till they see what begins to happen in their life. Mm -hmm. Come on and get it down to your spirit. So you don't want to prophesy this because you want to prophesy peace and blessings. And you want to keep telling them all this false stuff, all you false prophets. But the reality is you can tell them whatever you want to tell them. It's not going to change the judgment of the Lord. Come on and get it in your spirit. Therefore, uh, and so we'll speak to them. They won't hearken. You'll call unto them, the Lord says to the prophet, but they will not answer thee. Verse 28, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation, listen carefully, United States of America, that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, mm -hmm, right from the house of the Lord, and is cut off from their mouth. That's all of you false prophets, bishops, pastors, leaders, shepherds who are not after the, own, uh, the Lord's own heart, where Satan has smitten you, and now has scattered the sheep. Come on and get it down spirit. I'm telling you, this is not a game and it is not a joke and we really need to get this down in our spirits. The wind is kicking up on me here, but I'm, 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 I am intent and determined to preach the word of the Lord. Come on and get it in our spirit on this morning. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not, verse 28 of Jeremiah 7, for those of you just joining, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction, truth is perish, and is cut off from their mouth. Verse 29, cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places. Again, a symbol for repentance. For the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. I know many of you can't even believe that because we're in the dispensation of grace that the Lord would reject a generation. But let me remind you of what the prophet John the Baptist said to his nation of Israelites. And it's a blueprint because we read the word of the Lord. All of the word is given for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world have come. So the Bible becomes a giant blueprint with a series of paradigms in it. For every generation that hears the word of the Lord and reads the word of the Lord and studies the word of the Lord, we are also subject to it as we see these nations were and as these people were. And as such, the prophet John the Baptist tells his generation, he says, O generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. The answer is him. John the Baptist warned them. But the, but the problem was, it's not that they didn't have a warning, it's that they didn't receive it. 
See, because they did exactly what Jeremiah's generation did. They shut up their ears, and they did not want to hear. They didn't hearken, and they didn't answer the Lord when he called. Now, there were many that did, but the majority did not. And in particular, the religious leaders did not. The apostate religious leaders of Jesus' day, King Jesus' day, they did not answer the prophet. You know, like you're not answering the real prophets of the Lord in this generation. You don't want to hear the apostate preachers got millions of likes and followers on their apostate pages and on their apostate broadcasts. But those of us that are preaching the true word of the Lord, you, we can barely get folks on because you really don't want to hear, but you say you're the Lord's people. You all are a bunch of liars and I'm calling you a bunch of liars because the word of the Lord, read 1 John 1, calls you liars. Come on and get it in your spirit. Prophet Jeremiah, the Lord speaks to them and said, this is a nation of liars. Come on and get it in your spirit. You don't want none of that, but you're going to get it in the power of the Holy Ghost on this morning. Come on, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. You can see that with the prophet Moses. Come on and get it in your spirit. And I'm telling you right now, there are generations on the face of the earth right now that the Lord in his wrath has forsaken the generation, which means many of them in that generation are coming up out of here and hell is enlarging herself to receive these wicked. You don't want to believe that that's going on, but we've seen more people. You know, it used to be, listen, you when when they used to when they used to have list of everybody, all the famous people that died, it used to be one or two pages. Now you got books. Come on and get it down in your spirit. You're not even paying attention. But many folks are checking up out of here. Many of you already know I prophesied two, uh, two years ago that one from every household would be gone uh, by two, the end of 2022. One from every household would be gone by 2023, which, would be, which is next year. By that end, many households would be laid bare and desolate. You might be the only one left in your household. You better come on and get it in your spirit. You say, Bishop, I don't agree with that. And I'm arguing. You can argue all you want. You don't have to agree. But many of you know it's happening to you right now. I've met many people that have lost multiple family members in the first plague and we're three plagues in now. And we got seven more to go so what do you think that's going to look like when we get to the end come on and get it in your spirit and do it yesterday listen to me carefully and hear what the holy ghost is saying and this is going on because truth is perished from our streets from our nation from our halls of government truth is perished from our from the house of the lord where the word of the Lord is supposed to be. So the symbol of the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord is not in the symbol. The symbol and the word of the Lord don't match. And that's why our nation bears the markers of the judgment of the Lord. Verse 30, for the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. We're doing that here in the United States of America, worshiping Mary and this one and that one and St. St. Peter and St. Thomas and St. Shaquiti and St. Air. I mean, we're just worshiping worshiping anything now. We're worshiping trees and dogs and cats and goldfish. But the, the chief God that we're worshiping in America is the God that the King James and the Lord Jesus calls mammon. It's translated as money. The chief God in the United States of America is money. We take all of our education and counsel on how to get it. And our direct counsel, I taught on this uh, in the fifth part of our series, uh, the words of his holiness. If you missed that, you can go online, all of our pages, and you can get that the words of his holiness and i was teaching on that uh this past week and so you can get that teaching if you go on our facebook page come on and let's get it in our spirit our god in this nation is money and what you, where you receive the source of your direct counsel will establish your worship whether it's true or false we as believers god the god of abraham isaac and israel whose son is jesus christ he is the source of our worship and so we worship him in spirit that's capital s the holy spirit and in truth that's his word that's his unadulterated word. But many of you that are serving the God of money, you all your education and every direct counsel you have leads you to the false worship of worshiping the God of money. Everything, your every waking moment and your heart is to seek gain. And how can I get more money? And how can I set more snares and traps for people to buy my products and to get more money? But you don't care nothing about the word of the Lord and you watch what happens to your life. Because I certify you, I'm not the prophet speaking peace to you, to a people, according to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, that despises the Lord. Come on and get it in your spirit. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, the Lord says, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it, verse 31, and they have built the high places of Tophet. You know what Tophet represents? Tophet is a symbol of where the people of the Lord have turned away from his word mm -hmm, unto abominations. I'm going to read further. Let me read. That's what Tophet is the symbol of. Now watch what happens when we turn from the word of the Lord. So Tophet is supposed but watch what valley it becomes when you begin to turn away with, from the word of the Lord because the United States of America has become this valley.
come out and get it in your spirit. We have become the place of old fat. We have turned from the word of the Lord to the abominations. All kind of abominations have been committed because in the name of money and the love of money, I'm not talking about the physical money, I'm talking about the love of it. The scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. So those that were singing money is no, 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 baby. The love of money, the scripture says the root of all evil. It's not the, it's not the inanimate object of coins and, and, and paper. It is the love of it. It is what men will do to get it that becomes an abomination before the Lord. And listen, prophet, uh, Dishon and prophet say, listen, you see a lot of people with money. The prophetess was speaking on this. You see a lot of people with money. I'm telling you, you want to go on and get that message. But you don't know the evil that they've done to get it. I preach it all the time right along with her. I'm telling you right now, come on and get it in your spirit. You don't know the evil that people have done to get the money that they have. So don't be jealous of them because they might be right on their way to the lake of fire. You want to make sure that you're uh, that you're in in the kingdom of the Lord. Come on and get it in your spirit, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom. This was nothing but a regular valley. Mm -hmm. Come on and get it in your spirit. To burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Look what abominations they have committed in this valley. They're burning. This is abortion. They are aborting the lives of their sons and daughters. America, if you think we're not guilty of this, you're just not paying attention. You are driving at the wheel sleep because we have aborted and we have caused and taught the nations of the world to abort over 62 million of our children in the name of autonomos. You are your own God in the Greek. Auto meaning self, nomos meaning a law. You have become a law unto yourself. You know you're a victim of this seducing spirit and doctrine of devil when you're talking about it's my body and I have a right. You don't have a right and it is not your body before the Lord because the scripture says that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It belongs to the word, or, uh, to the Lord, or should I say it should be. But because see, you rejected the word of the Lord, your body is not the temple of the Holy Ghost and that's why you think you have a right to do anything you want with it. Adultery, fornication, I'm talking about uh, 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 you selling it for money, anything you want to do. And this is why our nation has become gross and perverse and we're calling evil good and good evil. We're letting the criminals go and filling the jails with the prophets and this will be more so as in the days coming ahead. Hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you true prophets. You better be ready. You better have your armor on and you better be ready to produce for the Lord. You better be ready to suffer for his gospel because it's on its way. Come on and get it in your spirit. And so this is the Valley of Hinnom. They have burned their sons and their daughters, verse 31, Jeremiah 7, for those of you just joining, which I commanded them not. The Lord said, I didn't command them to abort my creation, mm -hmm. neither came it into my heart. The Lord said, I don't even think about nothing like this. This was not in my heart. He said, this is not my desire. This is not my will. This is the people's desire and will to abort what I have created. Bishop, no, I created. No, 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 you didn't. Because the Lord says to the prophet Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, come on, anybody know the word of the Lord on this morning? Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. You say, uh, uh, ladies, I want to I encourage you. Uh, you say, well, what if I'm right? What if this? Let me tell you something. The Lord knows that that child that's in your womb and can raise that child up to be a prophet just like you see me preaching the word of the Lord. Come on and get it in your spirit. Can raise that child up to be great. You have to trust the Lord with the child, not trust in what people are telling you about the child. I'm saying that for all you mothers that might have uh, uh, came about a child. And even if it was your own sin, even if you did fornicate and, you, and, and, and now you find yourself with child, don't abort that child. You trust the Lord to raise up that child and watch what the child becomes. Come on and get it in your spirit. Well, what if it, but, but the child will be a rapist. No, it won't. It could be a prophet. And if you put the child in the hands of the Lord as Anna did, your son became a prophet. Your son can become a prophet too. You say, Bishop, how do you know? Because I know the word Lord. And I can read where the word of the Lord says God is no respecter of person. So in other words, if you did it for Sister Hannah, come on and go read your Old Testament and get yourself up to speed. He'll do it for you, my sister. Come on and get it in your spirit. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet. Please pay careful attention to what the Lord is saying here. Nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Uh-oh. I'm preaching in the power of the Holy Ghost on this morning because America has become the valley of slaughter. And if you don't think it has, your head has been somewhere in the sand. This nation has become the valley of slaughter. They are murdering our people in, in supermarkets. They are murdering our people. I'm a biracial kid, so all people are my people. I don't get into ethnicity and all this foolishness. If you are a human being, you are my people, and they are slaughtering our people in this country. And it is our own people doing it because Satan is causing women by seducing spirits and doctrine. That, that kid, it was a child. That man is a kid to me. 
Now he he might be, you might consider grown, but he's a child. You don't know nothing is 17, 18 years. Went to a super, supermarket and wounded and slaughtered 10 people. Come on and get it in your spirit. And you want to jump on him and you want to say this and you want to say that. But the protective hand of the Lord has removed off this nation to a degree that allowed that young man to do that. If you would have told us in the 70s and 80s growing up that they would be shooting up our churches, shooting up our supermarkets, shooting up various places in our country, we would have laughed you up under the table. Especially if you talk about shooting up the church. You talk about riding at the Capitol and all this stuff. We would have laughed you up under the table. We would have never been able to believe that we would see the kind of things we're seeing in our day and in our time. But they are happening. And that is because the nation is being turned into the valley of slaughter. You better come on and get it in your spirit. Because we have rejected the word of the Lord. For they shall be, for they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. We saw that in New York City during COVID. When Governor Cuomo had to open up that island out there and so many dead bodies that they begin to run out of places to bury them. We're seeing that. We've already seen that in our nation and it is continuing. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate. That's happening to us right now as we bear the markers of the Lord's judgment. More weeping is being heard in the land and less celebrated. And it should be in the church because until we get it right in the house of the Lord, the heathen and the unbeliever, the backslider, the apostate, in other words, those that the secular, those that are apart from the holy and far from the holy have no hope if we don't get ourselves where we need to be in the spirit of the Lord. Let's go right over to the eighth chapter of Jeremiah. And I told you we're going to stay entirely in the book of Jeremiah is what the Holy Ghost has led me to give us on this morning. Eighth chapter, we're going to read the fifth through the eleventh verse. As soon as I get some water here, we're going to read the fifth through the eleventh verse. This heat is starting to kick up out here. That's why I'm under this tree. First lady shaking her head is starting to kick up out here. But I, I promise you, we're going to get through this so we don't get into this 102 mm -hmm. degree, 104 degrees today. We're going to be out of here before that happens. We're going to let the Holy Ghost have his way. All right. So the eighth chapter, we're going to begin right at the fifth verse. Why then is this people of Jerusalem, we can say this about America, we can we can juxtapose Jerusalem with America there, slidden back by a perpetual was destroyed and just before they were scattered to the four winds of the earth the abomination that they committed that caused the lord to say that's it i made a determination to wipe them out and he didn't make the determination but they did it it was made ahead of time because the lord knows the end from the beginning when i say he made a determination what i'm really saying is he revealed to israel that now is your time i'm gonna i'm gonna take my protective hand completely off of you and allow this nation to be destroyed and overtaken by another nation and scattered to the four winds of the earth and it's going to stay that way for over two thousand years america you better you better get your ears up stop and stop stiffening up your neck and hardening your heart and you better hear what the holy ghost is saying because if you think the lord can't bring our nation down he is absolutely the one that can and he reserves the right to because he's the sovereign god that our leaders of this nation our founding fathers placed us under and when they placed us under he he took this nation on he blessed this nation he did all that he said he would do and we have not kept our part of the bargain and when you don't keep your part of the bargain and we get to the point that we are so perverse and we progress to the point that we are going to begin to abort our children we are on the last track on the last nail in that track and let me tell you something the lord has brought nations down 
throne that were mighty. He has brought four world empires down. And I don't care if we're the greatest one he could bring us down to. Because the scripture is clear. The only one that's actually going to stand is the millennial kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every other kingdom, if we refuse to hear the word of the Lord and obey the word of the Lord, especially in the house of the Lord, the Lord will reject both king, priest, and prophet and bring our nation right to the ground. He can scatter us to the four winds of the earth. And I'm going to tell you right now, our nation does not look like in the beginning days, it does not look like now what it did in the beginning days. Come on and get it in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And many of you say, oh, we don't want folks coming in here. We need folks coming in here because other people are coming who will hear the word of the Lord, who will be raised up in the spirit of the Lord, and it will save our nation because those of us, many of those of us who are native to this nation, we have stiff-necked and hard-hearted, uh, closed up our heart and our ears to the Lord and brought our nation under judgment. You better hear what I'm saying in this place on this morning because we're standing on holy ground in the word this morning, and you better get it down in your spirit. Hear what the spirit of the Lord is, is, is saying carefully verse 5 why then is this people of jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding they hold fast deceit mm -hmm. that's america they refuse to return mm -hmm. that could be said of our generation i hearkened and heard but they spake not aright the lord is listening through the prophets to hear if the preachers are going to preach right if the political leaders are going to speak on behalf of the lord if they're listening to hear if our corporate leaders are going to speak on behalf of the lord and the lord said none of them is speaking none of them speak the right thing none of them are saying what i want them to be saying no man repented him of his wickedness mm -hmm. that could be said of the united states of america and many of the nations of the world saying what have i done everyone turned to his course as the horse rushes into battle so not only are we operating in perverseness we have increased our level of perverseness since 1970 in this nation yea the stork in the heaven please hear the holy ghost carefully the stork in the heaven knoweth their appointed times. The turtle, the crane, and the swallow, the scripture says. They know they're approaching. They observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. We do not know the judgment. We don't know his ordinance and statute. We have, and what he says, no, he's not talking about intellectual sin. He's not talking about intellectual knowledge here. He's talking about knowing the Lord's word where we live it out every day in our decision-making processes as a na as a nation, as states in the nation, as uh, corporate leaders, political leaders, as uh, uh, holy leaders. We are supposed to know the word of the Lord. In other words, we're supposed to have a relationship with it where we teach it to our children. We teach it to our neighbor. We teach it to everyone we come across in the marketplace. We're not doing that in the nation, and that's why we're bearing the markers of the judgment of the Lord. How do we say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? That's what we say in this nation, but it is not true. The Lord certainly in vain he made it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. And the Spirit of the Lord reminded me that many books have been written since I have been in ministry and since I have been in the preaching of the word. I'm going to tell you right now, many of these people that have penned books, it is in vain because it did not lead you away from your transgression, your evil, and your sin. It actually promoted you and took you into the God of money and hooked you in, hook, line, and sinker to where the church is apostate now and it's so apostate that when you hear true prophets like myself, you turn me off and you won't even listen unto your own destruction and unto your own detriment. You better come on and get it in your spirit on this morning and you better do it yesterday. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them? None. Therefore will I give, it's not talking about general wisdom here, he's talking about holy wisdom. Wisdom that comes from walking with the Lord and knowing his word and carrying out his word and exercising his word on every level of our nation. Come on and in every dimension and in every ambit of influence. Therefore will I give their wives unto others. And there's a whole lot of adultery going on in our nation. The Lord is not saying he will do it. He said, I will take my hand of protection off of your marriages. That's why our divorce rate is so high. And now it's as high in the church as it is in the world. Come on and get it in your spirit. And their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. That's the God of money. From the prophet, listen to weed sites first. From the prophet even unto the priest. Uh, and you can certainly see that in the, in the Bible system. Everyone dealing falsely. Because your counsel and your education is all on how I can get money. We're teaching that more in the church now than we are in, we're teaching that more in the church now as much as in the church as in the business world. You don't even need to go in the business world to learn business. You can learn it right at the church. Instead of it being a house where the word of the Lord resides, it's a house where the word of the professor resides. The word of the business leader resides. The word of those that are far from God resides. 
Come on and get it in your spirit. We got a mega church right here uh, in Dallas, Texas that that can be set up. Come on and get it in your spirit. Come on and get it in your spirit. As a matter of fact, we got more than one. If you like that, come on and listen. We need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us on this morning. Verse 11. earlier when there is no peace 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 when there is no peace united states of america all of you that are preaching this false gospel that that the lord is going to bless us in peace his hand is coming off of us the world trade center is coming to the ground of which i was living in new york at that time and working in new york city get it in your spirit his hand is coming off of us and it is coming off in phases where open to our enemies and we're being destroyed by the sword of famine, by the sword of drought, by the sword, our crops are being affected, our health is being affected. The sword is a symbol for the destruction and desolation and it comes in many forms. This is why I, I taught a whole series concerning and been prophesying for the last two years about the four mighty spirits of the apocalypse. Come on and get it in your spirit and do it yesterday. Let's go back to the Verse, the Lord had purpose to destroy the wall. Now, we're going to talk about this wall. It is a symbol of the protection of a nation. It represents the military forces. And when the Lord begins to take his hand off of the nation, we begin to suffer embarrassment as it relates to our militaries. We saw in Afghanistan. We begin to be seen around the world as weak, as the leader uh, 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 of China um, sees us, Putin sees us. He has not listened to the United States of America. He's invaded Ukraine. He continues even with sanctions from the nations of the world he is continuing this and china is watching this and he is they are watching our response and i'm going to tell you right now this thing is going to get worse because they view us as weak and i'm going to tell you that that has never happened before and even when president trump was in office and all you trumpites don't get out of your seat get happy now sit down and quiet there's no amens right now because he's out of office but when he was in office a lot of this stuff they didn't look at us as that and it's not because it was it's not because it's it's a white man or a black man or this man or that man. It's because of the way his spirit was. He wasn't going to tolerate any foolishness. We need a president to come back into the White House who's not going not gonna to tolerate foolishness. I don't care what the color of his skin is. And those of you that think only white people can lead this nation, you are out of your mind. I say that and I can get away with it because I'm a biracial kid. I'm telling you right now, it's not the color of your skin. It's the integrity and the character to hear the word of the Lord as President Harry Truman did and have the guts to stand up. As the word of the Lord was presented to President Trump, he had the guts to stand up and at least do what God had called him to do. Now, he didn't do it in his entirety. He wasn't perfect and no president will be. But he at least had the testicle, the testicular fortitude to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause right there and let that sink deep down our spirit. And again, it's not because of the man. It's not because of the color of his skin. It's because he had the heart. He had a mustard seed of faith to do it. And you say he wasn't saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I would agree. But he had just enough uh, mustard seed of faith. The Lord didn't say you had to have a mustard seed of faith, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. He said if you have a mustard seed of faith, I can work with you. Come on, King Cyrus. I know y'all don't want to hear that, especially in the body of Christ. But those of you that are in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to tell you right now, you do you do know that what I'm preaching by the Holy Ghost is the absolute truth. The Lord said, I can work with a man if he has a mustard seed of faith. States of America because we can't even give him a little bit. That's the problem. We won't even give him a little bit. And so we, so the walls, when, when the Lord speaks of a wall, uh, uh, of a wall here through the prophet Jeremiah, what he's talking about is that it is a symbol of the protection of the nation. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is if when you with our military, what we have to understand is the wall. When you look inside of the walls, our military is directed by council. I'm going to pause and I want you to take a real good mental pin of that because I'm about to turn the corner right now. I want you to slap a second spiritual seatbelt across you because if you think it's hot and heavy already, it's going to get a whole lot hot, hotter and heavier by the time I finish. So the, the in verse eight, we're looking at he's talking about the wall, which represents our protection. The military is moved by direct counsel from the four generals that are leading the four armed services as they commune with Congress, as they commune with the president. 
So what the wall represents, it represents what should be inside of the wall is the Lord's counsel, but it is not inside of our military. Bishop, how do you know that? Because we're letting all kind of abominable lifestyles up in the military now that we didn't once tolerate. And if I have to spell it out for you, you're who the Holy Ghost is talking to. We're letting these abominable lifestyles in there now. We got all kind of wickedness going on in the military now. And I'm going to tell you when I was in, it was the beginning of this beginning to ask them, oh, should we let the gay community in the military? They started that when I was in back in the 90s, in the early 90s. Come on and get it in your spirit. So, by, so we went from 1970 where we, 73 and 74 in particular, the years I was born, we went from that time of, of passing laws right up there in the capital of New York where I was. That's why the Lord sent me there. Okay, we went there and we passed these laws to abort our children. And by the time we get in the 90s, now we're, allow we're allowing the gay community into the military. Back in the 70s and 80s, they killed people for that in the military. I'm not sanctioning that. I'm not speaking against the gay community harshly. You need to be delivered. You need to be saved. The Lord loves you and he wants to deliver and save you. And I love you too. But he is not going to accept that abominable lifestyle. He considers it abominable every from Old Testament to New Testament. He has declared that and we're declaring it as his servants. And they begin to let this lifestyle in the military and it weakens it. Come on and get it in your spirit. I'm not talking about physical strength here. I'm talking about the hand of the Lord. See, not looking in the right direction. You say, well, they're capable of that. I'm not talking about the human beings being capable. The Lord hasn't concerned himself with that. What he's saying is your military will only be undefeatable if my power is with it. So it has to receive my counsel. You can't go against my counsel and my hand stay on your military and it be successful. That's why we had the debacle, the debacle in Afghanistan. Because the hand of the Lord is coming off our military and our military is beginning to bear the markers. And it's not about their physical strength and fortitude. These men and women are courageous, but it's about the hand of the Lord. You need more than physical strength when you go into battle. You need more than the horse and the rider. Anybody knows your Bible on this morning? You know that. Come on and get it in your spirit. And I'm telling you, we got demons out here right now because folks are coming out here. I'm telling you, and as soon as they hear this word, they're backing up far from you. But I'm telling you right now, we're going to preach in the power of the Holy Ghost. We have stood in direct conflict with the Lord's counsel. That's what America has done. Go with me to Jeremiah, the 44th chapter, and we're going to do, this going to be a little more reading here, so that's why I tried to warn you. Jeremiah, the 44th chapter. We have forsaken the Lord's counsel in our protective measures. We're not finding the Lord's counsel inside of our military. We're not finding this counsel. And, that's the and you say, well, Bishop, we're praying and we're doing this and we're doing that. I'm not saying there are not believers in the military. I'm, I'm saying that the overall directing counsel of the military is not coming from the word of the Lord. It's coming from the vain imaginations of the hearts of the leaders. And that's why everything is being allowed in the military now that once was not in previous generations, which makes our generation the one, as I read earlier, the generation of the Lord's wrath. And that's why we're seeing this 10 years of 10 plagues coming on the land as it did in the days of the prophet Moses. Jeremiah, the 44th chapter, the 15th verse reads, Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense. Now I want us to pay careful attention, not so much to the wording here, but what is actually going on between the prophet Jeremiah and, and his generation of the Israelites. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, these are apostate men. These are Ahabs, letting the the wives serve false gods, and they say nothing and they do nothing. They don't. They're. I'm telling you, Ahab did it with Jezebel. Many of the men in our nation have have gone into an effeminate spirit. They have gone into an emasculated state, as Jezebel did to the men in her gen generation. We have a Jezebel spirit. All of our teaching is about worshiping the womb and worshiping motherhood and, and motherhood is so important and no one talks about fatherhood. They condemn fatherhood and all of this weird stuff. But let me tell you something. God did not speak to us through his word. But now let me say something. The Hebrews looked at him. They called him El Shaddai. Uh, femininity is a symbol to express nourishment. It's a symbol to express uh, 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 re rearing and raising up seed is a symbol to express nourishment and per and 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 and, and a uh a a uh a, a gentle uh, conviction and a gentle uh, provision. It is the Lord is is he is not male or female because the scripture says God is a spirit. Spirits don't have male and female gender. They they are referenced as uh, 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 male and female. But let me ex let me explain this. 
God is never referenced in the Hebrew scriptures nor in any translation of the scriptures as a woman. Come out and get it in your spirit. Now I'm saying that for a reason because if you haven't read this text before, when you read it, you're going to understand why I'm pointing this out. When the Lord speaks to us, when the Lord gives the revelation of his word, it is in the heat tense, but he is, does not have a gender. He's not male or female. He is a spirit, but his spirit has, he has created man, male and female, because the male and female psyche, the male and female, the way that we are made in his image is to express his character and to express his glory. And his glory is one that protects and provides that's the he sense and that it is the nourishing sense and the raising up and the taking care of and and the gathering and the and 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 the creating of the the house atmosphere and all of these things is the she sense that is expressed by symbol uh in the lord but he is neither male nor female so let's get that's so all we talk about god is a she you don't you are ignorant of the scriptures and the power of god let me tell you let me tell you emphatically you don't know your bible God is a spirit, the Lord Jesus said, and those that worship him in spirit, worship him in spirit and in truth. He created male and female. He created them. He created us to be male and female. Demons are not male and female. Angelic spirits are not male and female. They are spirits, and so are we spirits. When you take this body off of us, the only way we know that we're male and female is because we're in shells. We're in carcasses. We're in bodies. We have physical property. like he's one of us because he is not he is sovereign over us i assure you and he is a god that is a consuming fire let's get it down in our spirit now watch what goes on here then all the men which knew their wives had burned incense unto other gods this is apostasy idolatry that leads to apostasy and all the women that stood by a great multitude of them it says even all the people that dwelt in the land of egypt in pathros answered jeremiah saying as for the word that thou hast spoken us unto us in the name of the lord we will not hearken unto thee they're saying we're not going to receive the lord's counsel come on and get it in your spirit many of you have never read this passage before but you're going to read it and get it in your spirit today and you're going to do it right early i'm telling you right now i'm in the firepower of the holy ghost as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the lord we will not hearken unto thee but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth they're saying we're not going to follow the counsel lord we're going to follow our own counsel that's why I said earlier, autonomos, you have become your own gods, America. Come on and get it in your spirit. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. All you went around to my yes queen, yes queen. Spirit of error. It's not of the Holy Ghost. Okay, look at who they're worshiping. The queen of heaven. And to pour out, that's why I had to, I had to set the foundation. God is not a he or a she. God is a spirit. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we look at the false worship, as we have done, we and our fathers. Mm -hmm. And many of the men in the United States of America have turned to this kind of queen worship. And have, and, have, and have subjugated themselves to the spirit of Jezebel. Come on, get it in your spirit. To where women are controlling your lives. Controlling state communities. Controlling the nation. And let me tell you, Isaiah 3, the third chapter. Read it and get it in your spirit. says that when women begin to lead any nation, the hand of the Lord's judgment is upon that nation. You better get it in your spirit. Because we got one in the White House right now. Come on. I know you don't like this word. I know it's tough. But you don't know the scriptures. You're ignorant of the scriptures and the word of the Lord. If you think what's going on in this nation is proper, it is not to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah. I'm going to stop for a minute because I hear the devil trying to talk to many of you. I am not against uh, female leadership. Come on and get it in your spirit. The Lord poured his spirit upon all flesh, both male and female. Lady preachers, you can preach. Lady leaders, you can lead. But let me tell you something. He gave the headship to the man that's the answering mechanism the men have to answer in the nation to the lord god and when you begin to assert our authority and you begin to take control it is the spirit of jezebel it has nothing to do with sexuality 
Come on and get it in your spirit. Those of you preaching on spirit of Jezebel, sexuality, and a woman taking your husband, and all the stuff, you you are ignorant of the scripture. That has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the emasculating of masculinity to where it can't be the head. Uh-oh. Let me stop right there and let that sit deep down in our spirits in this country. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the emasculating the head so that it can't lead and answer the Lord. Try to get it in your spirit. And then many of you are with because you have did that to the Lord. You done ran all the men about the house, out the out the city, and out everywhere else, and now you're trying to have them back. Come on, I ain't gonna fool with you this morning. I'm gonna leave it alone. In the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals, and we were well and saw no evil. Listen to what they're saying to the prophet. We're not gonna to set the council of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're not going to listen to him. We're going to do what we want to do. And then they said, when we were serving this queen, this false god, we were well, and we had victuals, and we had food to eat, and we had money. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying in America. When I serve the god of money, everything's well. But when I serve this god of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, then it seems like all hell breaks loose. But but let, but we're going to show you why. The prophet's going to show us why on this morning. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven, they said, when we stop worshiping our idol God, look at what they're saying to the prophet. To pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted, in other words, that word wanted is translated lack. We have lacked all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. That's happening in the United States of America right now. Now, this is their argument with the Lord through the prophet. Now watch what the prophet says uh, at verse 20 uh, of Jeremiah, the 44th chapter, for those of you just joined. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men, all the Ahabs, and to the women, all of those that are emasculating the Ahabs, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, the incense that ye burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them and came it not into his mind? See, when you was burning all this incense, it seemed like you was prospering because Satan even told Jesus that if he would bow to him, he'd give him all the kingdoms of the world. Many of you are not prospering by the spirit of the Lord. I'm talking to this apostate church right now, and I'm talking to the body of Christ so you don't get fooled and get over there with them. Many of you think that the Lord is blessing you. It's not. Satan can bless you with money. Satan can bless you with power. Satan can lift you up and even give you kingdoms in this world. Many of our kings and presidents in this world and queens have been lifted up to the seat of power by Satan himself. You go back and look in the history. They have done it by blood, shedding innocent blood and continuing to shed innocent blood. You cross many of these powers, these monarchical powers and these dictatorial powers just like you see with Putin in Ukraine and they will put you in the grave faster than your eye can blink and faster than a cobra can strike you. Come on and get it in your spirit. I'm talking to you in the firepower of the Holy Ghost on this morning. The, the prophet says, did not the Lord remember them and came and not into his mind? So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed. The reason when you stop serving your false gods that God allowed you to be brought low is because he remembered your sin against you. See, when you came out of the camp of Satan, you got to be humbled because you come over in God's kingdom talking about, I'm supposed to be blessed and have everything. No, you're not. Because the Lord remembers your sin against you. And when you refuse to repent, he's going to bring it upon you. See, it's not that they came and see if they would have repented and come into the Lord's kingdom, like we're calling the nations to repentance right now, the Lord won't remember the sin against you. The scripture says he'll cast it in the sea of forgiveness. He told Jeremiah in the first part, but he said, come, or Isaiah, I'm sorry, the prophet Isaiah in the first time says, come and consider with me, though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash them and make you whiter than snow. See, the Lord said, I'll, I'll remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west, the United States of America, all believers, I mean, all unbelievers, apostates, and those who are far from the commonwealth of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me explain something to you. It's not that the Lord, it's not when they came to the Lord that he allowed their sins to be upon them. He allowed that because they wouldn't repent of it. If you repent of your sins, please hear this preacher carefully. God will forgive you of your sins, remove them apart away from the east and the west from you and he will begin to bless you without a penalty coming upon you but the problem with them is they refuse to repent that's what they're saying when they said they refuse to hearken we refuse to see receive the counsel of the lord we're not going to listen to him we're going to do what we want and that's why they begin to experience this kind of detriment upon their individual lives and upon their nation come on and get it in your spirit 
the Lord can no longer bear, verse 22, because of the evil of your doings, because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment. That's the United States of America right now before the nations of the world and a curse without inhabitant. You say, Bishop, how do you know? Because many of the bishops and pastors and others from across the nations have shared with me uh, uh, that that is that they view our country that way. As this, and I'm listening to a pastor out of Kenya, Africa, preaching last night that he thought America was in one condition when I've been prophesying for some time. We're not trying to tell all these bishops and pastors in these other nations that we are not what you think we are. And when he came here recently, he was going around and he saw we have beggars in the street just like they do. Come on and get it in your spirit. And they didn't think, they thought America was blessed and that nothing was going on like that. And I tried to explain to them and I tried to tell them, stop looking at us like we're some blessed nation because the hand of the Lord's judgment is upon us now. And you're and we have many homeless, many people in the street. We are spamming. They are looking for money in these other nations. From They're even, they, listen, they approach me and the first lady about money all the time. And we're telling them, listen, many people are starting to have more than the preachers in this uh, country because the Lord is pressing in on us because our nation refuses to receive his counsel and walk in it. Come on and get in your spirit. And this pastor out, out of Kenya, Africa, he discovered that on his recent trip here that he we're not as blessed as they originally thought we were. And he's standing in his pulpit this morning telling his people that we are not and not to look at us as something because the hand of the Lord's judgment is upon us. I wish you'd get it in your spirit and come on and wake up. And all you bishops and pastors in these other countries, please, if you need to know, my number's the church number. My number is on that church line. It is on all of our sites. You call me so we could have a conversation because I'm telling you, our nation is under judgment. So if you're looking to us for blessing, you better look at it. You better start to really pray for us if you want to continue to get the blessing because the blessing is going far away from us at present time and is doing on a steady slide and scale because of our backslide. Come on and get it in your spirit. Because ye have burned incense, mm -hmm. he says, a curse without in heaven as at this day, verse 23, because ye have burned incense, because ye have sinned against the Lord. You, 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 how did they sin? They didn't want to receive his counsel. We read it early. And have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. See, they don't want to receive his counsel. Nor walk in his law, that's his counsel, nor in his statutes, that's another measure of his counsel, nor in his testimonies, that's another measure of his counsel. So of his counsel. Therefore, this evil is happened unto you as at this day. Look at the prophet tells you, because you don't walk in the counsel of the Lord, America, because we have forsaken the counsel of the Lord, this is why we're seeing these plagues in our land, this perishing, this desolation, and this destitution. Me and the first lady, uh, just about a year ago, if that, we have seen a mother who had five caskets of the funeral, all five of her children died in a single instant, and we're looking at five different caskets there. And that's what the Lord said would begin to ha happen. You, she is the only one left in her household now, and the Spirit of the Lord had his prophets, me and, and, uh, uh, included, prophesying that many households would be left desolate. You might be the only one left in it. And this, and this had come to pass, unfortunately, for this young lady. But we're praying for her. We're holding you up, young lady. If you're listening to me, if this video comes across you, this teaching comes across you, we're praying for you. And the Spirit of the Lord will restore you if you will turn to his counsel. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people, verse 24, and to all the women, hear the word of the Lord, for all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, we will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. He's saying you're going to do it because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, see, you folks think the Lord's blessing you because you're doing what you want to do. No, he's not. Now listen to what he says. Therefore, because he's because now I'm talking to the United States of America and its inhabitants as Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, was talking to the inhabitants of his generation. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord. All Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt, talking about the United States of America, we can juxtapose us there. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. That's why the true word is coming has come out of all these apostate church, because the name of the Lord. Lord is no longer in your mouth because you won't receive this counsel, you apostate churches. Come on and get in your spirit. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. This is the Lord saying that, and that's what's happening in our nation because the Lord's word is a two edged sword, according to the book of Hebrews, and the two edges are salvation and judgment. Salvation if you accept it, judgment if you reject it. So the same word that can bless you from the Lord will, will mutate and begin to curse you if you begin to reject the counsel and the word of the Lord. His 
as it is right now and steadily coming off of us and progressing more and more as time goes on here the Lord's hand will come off of us to the point where to the point where um, we will find ourselves bearing the markers of his judgment. Listen to what the Lord is saying carefully. Behold, I will watch over them for evil, verse 27, and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there be an end of them. And I'm telling you right now, the Lord is removing all the wicked men in this land in the United States of America so that he's setting America up for revival and redemption. And y'all don't want to hear this and you don't want to preach it, but all of you wicked are coming up out of this nation, saith the Lord, I'm prophesying in the Holy Ghost and I'm prophetically uttering to the United States of America that all of you are wicked. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you did an evil deed. You said I'm talking about you twist the word of God. You don't want to live it and you don't let others live it and you are totally rejected and you are reprobate and your conscience is seared. You are that big state you are coming up out of here so others can come into the kingdom i'm telling you right now your swift destruction is at hand and it is not going to be long before it comes upon you better hear what i'm saying to you in the power of the holes yet a small number that escaped the sword shall run out of the land of egypt into the land of judah now the land of egypt here is a physical land in this particular text but it is a symbol to describe those of you that are in this apostate place in this nation and in the house of the lord the lord is saying i'm going to kill all the wicked that are going to take my hand off where many of you begin to die and that's why i prophesied when the plague broke out in 2020 that all these preachers you saw that were dying in the pulpit and all these first ladies at an unprecedented rate i'm telling you right now many of them are in hell right now all of them didn't make it into the kingdom mm -mm. they didn't see the king because they didn't see him upon the earth they were doing their own thing. They were serving their own lust. They were serving. And you saying, I can't believe you said that, Bishop, my pastor. He was so holy. The Lord doesn't look after the outward appearance. He looks after the heart. You better remind yourself of what the Lord says in his counsel and in his word. He's not looking at your pastor and your bishop's outward works and what they do and all of this. He said, because he told the religious leaders, he told the Jews of his generation, he said, accept your righteousness, exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. The only way that's possible is you have to be in the spirit of the Lord, which means you have to be indwelt and led by the Holy Ghost. You can't just have him in you. You have to do what he says. You have to accept his counsel and live by it. I'm telling you, many of those leaders that passed away, they are not in the kingdom right now. You can get mad at them all you want. You can be as mad as a hornet. But I'm telling you right now, by revelation of the Holy Ghost, many of them are being tormented in hell right now because the Lord doesn't look after what they did outwardly. He looks after what was in their heart. And many of them twisted the word of God. And they led you in a lie so that the blind led the blind right into a ditch. And that's why many of you are apostate right now. And I'm telling you about the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Your leaders are not with the king right now. Many of them. Many of them are, but many of them are not. You better be warned that the same thing can happen to us if we don't walk in the fire power of the Holy Ghost. You better get it down in your spirit and you better do it immediately. Come on and get it in your spirit. So yet a small number, verse 28, that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. That's coming out of the darkness and into the marvelous light, the apostle Peter says, for those of us in the dispensation of grace, let me speak in our language. And all, but it's the same thing as what he's saying here. And all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, that's all of you that went in this apostate place in the spirit realm, shall know whose word shall stand, mine or theirs. The Lord is testing you now through the prophet. You're going to know whose word is going to stand here, yours or mine. You talking about you want to serve false gods? You talking about Satan can bless you? You talking about your bishop and your pastor can bless you? You talking about all these false prophets? You're going to have the houses, lands, and cars? The Lord said, when I bring your house desolate, you're going to know whose word is going to stand, mine or theirs. You don't want to listen to the six foot two high yellow prophet from Detroit, Michigan. The Lord said, I'm going to show you whose word's going to stand, mine or yours. You don't want the Lord to, to begin to count you as an enemy to his cross. You don't want the Lord to count you as an enemy, as it says in Lamentations 2, and begin to stand in opposition to you, United States of America. Those of you in the state church, those of you in the state community, those of you that are in the corporate community, those of you in the political community, community you do not want the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, to stand in opposition to you. Many of you are anti-Semitic and you're going off on his people, Israel. But you better understand that Israel is the apple of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel's eye. And you are not going to tee off on his people. He told Father Abraham, those that bless you, he's talking about his people now, I will bless him. Those that curse the nation of Israel, I will curse them. America, if you get on the wrong side of Israel, as you're seeming to do now, I'm telling you right now, you're cursing this nation. You better get it down in your spirit. And those of you who 
with your funky little spirit saying, I don't believe the nation's going to be judged because there's too many believers in the nation. Let me tell you something. When the Lord brought Babylon upon Israel, the prophet Ezekiel was carried away in the second phase. And then the prophet Daniel went after him. I don't care if we're safe, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. In this nation, if you all continue to go down this path, the Lord will take his hand completely off this nation. And even his servants like myself will be subject to his judgment. We'll have to go through it with you. And we're going through it with you right now. So don't you think the Lord won't put his judgment on the United States of America because his prophets are in the land. He will put it on us as sure as you hear my voice. Come on, verse 29, and this shall be a sign unto you, saith the Lord, that I will punish you in this place. What place? The place of apostasy. And the place of apostasy is the house of the Lord. The place of apostasy is our U.S. military. The place of apostasy is our halls of government. The place of apostasy is our corporate world and, and, and our business halls. The place of apostasy is our Congress halls where the laws are made right up there in Albany and in Washington. All of you lobbying for abominations that the Lord calls abominable, trying to make marriage what it's not trying to kill children and all this other stuff that you're doing let me tell you right now the lord is saying i'm standing against you as an enemy and i'm telling you right now we're going to see whose word is going to stand you better get it down in your spirit that you may know that my word shall surely stand against you for evil are we listening to what the lord is saying you will surely know that my words will surely stand you're going to know that my words will surely stand. I'm reading it till it gets down in our spirit. You will know, United States of America, all of you that are apostate in this apostate church, you will know that my words shall surely stand against you for evil. If you don't see that in the United States of America right now, you have eyes that see but do not perceive. You have ears that hear but do not understand. In your spirit. Go back with me to Lamentations, the second chapter. We're going to look right at verse 9 in our last symbol. The Lord's given me rest. we got two more scriptures to go through and then we're out of here for this morning. Verse 9, I alluded to the gates in this text earlier. And the gates are a symbol of what should be, of what is actually inside of the nation. Okay, and when you look at the United States of America, we were a nation founded upon God. Many of you don't know your history, especially you young people. You better go back and read about the founding fathers. You better go back. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to get a good expose on him, Prophet Jonathan Khan out there, uh, the pastor out there in... Um, I believe it's Wayne, New Jersey, out there in New Jersey. He's written a series of books. You go get them books, The Mystery of the Shemitah and The Harbinger 1 and 2, and all these books. I'm going through the series right now, the entire series. I got all six books. I'm through the fourth one, and uh, I'm on the, and, and, and I got two more to go. And I'm telling you right now, he'll get you right up to speed as to how this nation was founded. Many of you know your history. I just read it for good measure. I knew much of what, uh, uh, what is in his writings, but it is always good to go back and refresh yourself. He even talks about many things the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me while I was up in Albany, New York. The Lord took him up there, so powerful, uh, uh, pick up his books, and um, and he'll get you up to speed. Verse 9, I'm going to tell you what happens. The gate, what should be inside the gates of America, because the God of Abraham, in, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, whose son is Jesus Christ, is the God of this nation. What should be in this nation is communion with him. That's what the gates represent. The gates are a symbol of what should be inside of the walls of the nation. Mm -hmm. The symbols on the gates, but the symbols on our gates are the symbols of the God of money mm -hmm. and not the God uh, uh, of salvation. Come on. In Jesus Christ, we don't have uh, we don't have communion with him inside of the gates. And this is the last thing the Holy Ghost wants to talk to us about, because we have forsaken that communion with him. We have forsaken that communion with him. Go with me to Jeremiah, the 18th chapter. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, we have forsaken that communion. Our nation is bearing the markers of the Lord judgment because we have forsaken communion with him. Now, we're going to take a look at, 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 at two images of what it looks like to commune with the Lord. Come on. And what it looks like to not commune with the Lord. We have forsaken communion with the Lord God, whose son is Jesus Christ. We have forsaken communion with him in the United States of America. And that's why our land is turning into the valley of slaughter. Come on and get it in your spirit. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is Jeremiah communing with the Lord. Whenever you're communing with the Lord, a word will show up. People tell me all the time, Bishop, I'm praying for you. I know you're not because you never have a word from the Lord. My father tells me all the time, son, I'm praying for you. No, I know he's praying for me actually because he will call me. The Lord gave me a word for you. Mm -hmm. And I receive it. And he called me about two weeks ago and I was going through something. Satan had attacked 
viciously. And I'm telling you right now, Satan had all he could handle and eventually I overcame him because I don't get in these, I've learned not to get in these places where it's like, oh, you know, what was me? the devil's doing? Now the devil ain't got no power over here because I believe the word that he's given me power over all the forces of the evil one. So it wasn't that Satan was overcoming me, it's that we're going blow for blow, round for round. And my father called and the Holy Ghost had spoke something to me. My father called and affirmed it. And that was the blow that knocked the enemy right out the box. I'm telling you right now, because many of you, you're good in the short range battles when Satan attacks. But if he draw out a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and man, if he gets to a couple of years, I believe we got to learn. I prophesied this for the past 20 years. We have to learn how to win, how to win the long range battles. See, because it took me about 10 years in, in my salvation to understand this. So for the last 20 years, I've been prophesying. We have to learn how to not just win the short range battles. Believers, we got to learn how to win the battles when they stretch out like the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, the woman that was bent over for 18 years, the man uh, uh, who was at the pool of Bethesda for, for 38 years, I believe he was there somewhere. Now. See, that's what we got to learn how to do. You got to learn how to win the long range battles when you've been talking to a family member for Christ and praying for him for years. Keep on praying. Keep on talking to him as the Holy Ghost leads you. Don't beat him over the head with the Bible, but keep on living it before him. Keep on sharing a word when they come to you and they ask for the for your counsel. Give them the Lord's counsel, not your counsel, until it breaks in their spirit. Many, several of my family members are saved because I won those long range battles. My father won those long range. I'm saved because my father won the long range battle with Satan of praying for my spirit and praying for my soul. Come on and get it down in your spirit. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah, verse 1 of Jeremiah 18, for those of you just joined or will be joining, from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. See, the Lord gave him a word, and there will I cause thee to hear my words. This is communion. The Lord is telling the prophet where to go. Can he tell you where to go, body of Christ? I know he can. Can he tell you what to say and what not to say? Where to go and what not to go? He can tell me because he told me to come to Dallas, Texas. I'm here right now prophesying to you all. So come on and get in your spirit. I'm not just I'm not just preaching this word. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm, li I'm living it out. I left New York where I was for 23 years. I had resigned to be there for the rest of my life. But the Lord had other uh, plans for me. He had other commandment for me. So he commanded me to come to Dallas, Texas. And I'm out under this tree preaching right now to this Dallas, Fort Worth area and to the state of Texas and nations of the world in the United States of America at the command of the Lord. Then I went down to the potter's house. See, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah is following the counsel of the Lord. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. America, this is an image of revival. The Lord has to take us from apostasy, from a marred clay jar of apostasy. And he has to form us into a honorable vessel that bears his word. I'm going to pause right there and let that sink deep down our spirit. You apostate church, body of Christ, pay attention. The United States of America, open up your hard-headed, hard-hearted ears and eyes and hear and see what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. If we want this nation to be restored, President Trump said he wants the nation to be made great again. If you want the nation to be made great again, we are going to have to allow the potter to take the marred apostate nation that we become and turn it, form it into another vessel of holiness and righteousness where we will hear, not just hear the word of the Lord, we will bear the word of the Lord and our laws will bear the word of the Lord. And when people come from around the world to enter these gates, they will see communion with the Lord as they saw. Now, isn't it interesting? You couldn't finally hardly find any Anybody in the church? Now we start to finally talking about we're going to rebuild. We never repented, never considered our nation. The hand of the judgment uh, of the Lord's judgment was upon our nation. We never repented of our sins as a nation. And guess what? And guess what? I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, our nation is bearing the markers of, of judgment. Almost 20 years later, actually 20 years later, because that was 2001, over 20 years later, we're bearing the markers of the Lord's judgment. So we didn't come, go away from the Lord's judgment. We're actually running headlong into it because the Lord is, has got to be able to make our nation into another vessel that bears his word, that when people enter the gates, they will see communion with the God of the Son, is Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you right now, that's not happening because what we have done is we've given deference to all the false gods of every other religion in this country. There was a time that I was in school that when you stood up, when you stood up, 
when you stood up and they said prayer by my fellow students uh, uh, gave prayer in the school when they gave prayer the teachers told those who were not Christians they said you stand there and you observe and that and then that's what Israel the Lord told Israel when the strangers the King James says it's translated as foreigners when those who are not of your nation native to your nation who are not indigenous come into the nation they are not to overtake your God they are to stand in silence and observe the God of Abraham Isaac and Israel America they are to stand and observe our God we are not to give in to their gods and let me tell you something prophet Jonathan Khan reports that the God Kali who is a dangerous God it was placed on the Empire State Building and I mean hung I mean hung out there in pride and that's what the prophet said would begin to happen when a nation is running headlong to bear the markers of the Lord's judgment we'll begin to call that which is evil good we'll begin to call good evil and we'll even begin to celebrate the abominations which we're doing in this nation against the counsel of the Lord. So we are supposed to be a nation that communes with the Lord and we are not. O house of Israel, uh, it says, uh, verse five, then the word of the Lord came to me, that's the prophet Jeremiah saying, O house of Israel, can I, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. He's saying that to the United States of America. America, cannot the Lord do with you as the potter has done? Changed you into what, change us back into what we originally should be. Can he not change us into the old paths of holiness and righteousness? Yes, he can, saith the Lord. Behold, as the day is in the potter's hands, America, so are ye, says the Lord, in my hand, O house of Israel. We have to juxtapose us with them. At what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation, please hear the counsel of the Lord, against whom I pronounce, turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil. The Lord says, I will stop it and put my hand of protection back upon that nation. He says, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Now, that's not the Lord repenting because many of you are getting confused right now, especially my new believers, because you read the scriptures, the Lord is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man. Uh, that he should repent but i'm going to tell you right now though it's not the same type of repentance here the lord doesn't repent as he's not what he's talking about repenting here is he's saying i will turn my word away from you for cursing and to blessing if you will obey my counsel and begin to walk in my counsel verse 9 and at what instance i shall speak concerning a nation please hear this united states of america and apostate church carefully and at what nation at what instance i shall speak concerning a nation and concerning the kingdom to build and to plan it if it do evil in my sight as america has done that it obey not my voice then i will repent of the good wherewith i said i would benefit them you better hear what the lord is saying through his word on today now therefore go to speak to the men of judah and to the inhabitants of jerusalem saying thus saith the lord behold i frame evil against you and devise a device against you like famine like sword like peril like we're seeing in the united states of america mass shooters Come on and get it in your spirit. And it's getting worse and worse because I prophesied to us a year and a half ago, we're in the cauldron of the Lord's judgment. Return me now. This is what the Lord of counsels our country and our nation. Return me now, everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. You got to return to the paths of holiness and righteousness, America, if we're to have revival and if the Lord is to make us into an honorable vessel. And they said there is no hope Listen to what they said to the prophet. There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. Just like we read in the last passage of scripture. They said, now we're looking at an apostate group, both in this passage and in the other passage, and it's not the same apostate group, but they both have the same uh, hearts. They're not going to follow the counsel of the Lord. There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. So they're not going to commune with the Lord. They're going to commune with the evil of their own hearts. That's where we are in the United States of America right now. Now, go with me. We're going to read the Holy Ghost. Is going to go with me to Psalms 119. We're going to read uh, three or four short verses there. And then we're going to close out in prayer. We bless the Spirit of the Lord. Please hear. I hope everyone's hearing. And the Holy Ghost is touching somebody else besides me to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Psalms 119, I quoted 62 and 63 to us, back up to verse 57. This is how, this is our hope, America. This is our hope, apostate church. 
this believers you also need to know this is our hope listen to what king david says thou art my portion O lord that's communion mm -hmm. now look at what he says when you're communing with the lord this is how you know Bishop, how can i know when i'm communing with the lord and and, and i and, and i'm in the fire power of the holy ghost i've been successful we're going to read it right now thou art my portion O lord so he has to be your portion first he has to be the one you go to for all your counsel he says i have, you say bishop how do you know let's just keep reading i have said that i would keep thy words Mm -hmm. America, that's his counsel. We got to keep his counsel. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me, not according to my sins, not according to my ways, whether they be good or evil. The uh, King David says, he says, be merciful unto me according to thy word. Because sometimes, believers, you know, we mess up. And if the Lord was merciful according to what we're doing, we'd be in trouble. We'd be under his judgment too. And we're not because he's not merciful to his sons and daughters according to our acts. He's merciful according to his great name and according to his word, his counsel. Come on and get it in your spirit. And the rest of you need to learn the ways of the Lord. I thought on my ways, this is repentance, and turned my feet unto thy testimony. See, that's repentance. You thought, you think on your ways, and then you th you match them against the Lord's word, and if they don't match up, you got to turn from your ways and go towards the Lord's word. That's when you know you're successful in communion. I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandments. Those of you that are trying to find every way you can be to stay possibly saved and do the most wickedness you can do, you skirt in the line, I want to see how much I can do and still be saved, you can't. It's either or. It's the Lord's word or your word. There is no in between. Come on and get it in your spirit. The bands of the wicked have robbed me. This is where I want to encourage the body of Christ and end on this note. The Lord told me to encourage the body of Christ. The bands of the wicked have robbed me. That's translated. The bands of the wicked are surrounding us, body of Christ. I'm going downtown Dallas. I'm seeing all these pride flags everywhere. I felt vexed like in the days of Brother Lot. Come on and get it in your spirit. And everywhere we turn, we're seeing all this evil and all of this living accord, uh, according outside of the council of the Lord. We're seeing all this stuff. But let me explain something to you. Even though we're surrounded by this, here's what the Lord is counseling the body of Christ. But I have not forgotten thy law. I've not forgotten your word, Lord. I've not forgotten your testimonies, your statutes. I've not forgotten your counsel. I'm still walking and living in your counsel, even though the nation I'm in is not. You know, like looking out here, mm -hmm, that's why we're out here preaching, because we got a whole lot of people not walking in the counsel of the Lord out here mm -hmm, and in this nation. And it's a representation of this nation. But I'm out here preaching in the midst of them. And I'm surrounded by them. But I'm going to preach until somebody hears the word of the Lord. Or your house is brought desolate. The Lord told me to preach this. said, Bishop, you preach this every week. Every How long are you going to preach this? The Lord told me to preach it until all your houses are left desolate unto you. If you won't turn and you won't receive his counsel. We just honor the spirit of the Lord out here. The Lord has given me rest. He wants to say no more. I'm not going to say any more. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you on this morning for the counsel of your word, for the light of life in your word. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and is a light unto our path. Those of us who will accept it and not reject it. Those of us who will walk by your counsel and not reject your counsel. Father, we bless you on today for your grace and your mercy. There is no stronger word than yours. Your word shall surely stand. It will come to pass. And it does not matter what we say. If we begin to act in our own strength and in the power of our own word, you will set yourself against us and against our nation as an enemy as you have done as of this day and the generation of your wrath will expire because they cannot go on in the counsel of your word father we are praying for this nation we are praying for the inhabitants of this nation we are not rejoicing right now we don't find comfort or rejoicing in this season we are repenting we are in sackcloth and ashes we are weeping for our nation this is a nation that has turned away from you but father we are turned towards you and we're going to turn towards you we're going to continue to lift you up and and preach your word you said if i be lifted up you will draw on men uh, but uh, listen it might take some time and we know that father but we're patient in the holy ghost we are not waiting you out lord we are waiting on you holy ghost we're not waiting you out as your servants we're waiting on you we're waiting on you to move by your power and by your presence through this nation to bring many to you who are far from you and who refuse to hear lift yourself as we lift you up in this nation holy ghost move by your spirit move by your power move through every nook and cranny of this nation begin to turn the hearts of our governors the hearts of our state leaders our controls the hearts of our apostate leaders in this apostate church begin to turn the hearts lord remake that uh take that white house and remake it over and put righteous leaders in there that will hear and follow your word lord at every level in the senate 
Senate, in the House of Representatives, in the uh, uh, presidency, in the vice presidency. Lord, turn the, the, the turn our nation over and make this nation a vessel of honor again before you that the nations can look at us and see the prosperity and see the blessing. Your hand of blessing upon us. See that we're protected. See that we're the greatest nation still upon the face of the earth. But Lord, it is certain if we continue down this headlong path of rejecting communion with you, we're rejecting your word and not receiving your counsel, we are going to be a nation that is going to come to destruction. I know many can't believe it, Father, but you are warning us through your servants. You are warning our nation. You are warning the leaders of our nation. Fathers, the body of Christ, we are preparing ourselves to go and be with you and to come up out of here, but we are working while it is day, for you told us the night is coming when none of us will be able to work this word of righteousness and holiness to this people, and they will be completely wide open to the judgment of Satan and his forces. Father, we bless you on this day. For the remainder of this day, help us not to do your desire. Help us not to do our will and our desires, but help us to do your will and your desire. If anybody needs you, Lord, let them cross our path or we cross their path and give us the boldness, the strength, and the courage to give your word to them that they might have the opportunity to be saved. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We magnify you. extol you. We worship you in North Garland, Texas here at Holford Park. Lord, we know that you'll meet us here on next week. Have your way. Continue to have your way in the life of your sons and your daughters as you lead us by your power and by your spirit. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.